Can you hear me? I can. Awesome. And what David didn't tell you is that I had to get over myself in order for me to help others get over themselves. And so we're talking about the battlefield of a pandemic life today. And you know, pandemics come in many different forms. Throughout history, we've seen such things as the yellow fever in 1793, polio in 1916, Asian flu from 1957 to 1958, the AIDS virus, 1981 until the present time, and now COVID-19. And it, it came in such a way that we don't even know how to receive the changes that have come into our lives. And that when you get into a place where a pandemic takes over your life, you have to think differently. You have to see things differently. You have to be different because everything is different. And I'm gonna try to, to stay calm because I am a preacher and I, it will come out. I will just flow with that thing. So just bear with me because I want you to hear what the Lord has given me for this today. And by the way, I wanna thank Mr. Craig Johnson. Thank you so much for seeing something in me to ask me to speak for this awesome, awesome event. Um, Dr. Silvoso has already spoken on some of the things I'm gonna talk about. The young lady who was speaking just now, she's already spoken on some of the things, but I, I just want to encapsulate some of the things they said with what God has allowed me to go through as a drill sergeant of life, and that's who I am in the speaking realm, the drill sergeant of life, because on this battlefield that we're on, we're on it every day, constantly, continually. There is no way to get off this battlefield because it's the battlefield of life. But when you're talking about a battlefield of a pandemic life, there are more things to consider than yellow fever or polio or the Asian flu or AIDS or even COVID-19. There are also pandemics of ignorance. Okay, let me just go ahead and say it like that, because when you look around our world today, you see that there's so much ignorance going on that it's just crazy. There's no reason why in 2020 we still have to deal with some of the things that we see going on in our world today. You also have a pandemic of death, loss and grief, which I'm going to go into a little bit um, later. But I, I want to share these things with you because this is my battlefield of life. You also have the pandemic of rejection. And you as business leaders, as business owners, I'm sure that at some point or, or the other in your life, you have faced rejection in your business and wondered, what in the world am I gonna do? How am I gonna get past this stage in my life? What, what if nobody buys my products? As an author, and by the way, it's six books, I just released my sixth book, Chronicles of Grief. And, um, but it, my family members, many of them have not even purchased my books. So that's rejection. Then there's failure, real or perceived failure. That can be a pandemic in your life. Confusion, the list goes on and on. But the fact of the matter is, are you resilient enough to jump back up and say, you know what? These things have happened in my life, but that's not what's going to take me out. I refuse to be taken out by the pandemics in my life so that I can not accomplish what God has said for me to accomplish in this life. And let me tell you something. When those pandemics hit, they hit in such a way that you really don't know what to do. Okay, let me tell you about a phase of my life that really, I, I believe it was probably equipped to take me out, but God. And I have to say, but God, because had it not been for the Lord who was on my side, I would not be standing here today to present this to you. On January the 27th, 2018, I was in New York visiting my 80-something, 80-something-year-old dad. As a matter of fact, he just turned 89 this year. And on January, 20, January 27, 2018, I received notification that my high school basketball coach, Coach Jean Johnson, had passed away. When I found out she was gone, it hit me like a ton of bricks because she was the only person in my life that had told me that she was proud of me. No one in my family had ever said to me, I'm proud of you. Coach Jean Johnson took time out of her day to say to me, B, I am so proud of you. You went in the army, you got out of South Carolina, you just did your thing. And that just, it did more to me than what I realized. Because on the day of her death, I cried. I, I stayed in my room at my dad's place. And he wondered, he said, are you all right? I, I'm okay. Because he wouldn't have understood what I was facing with the death of my beloved coach. On February the 15th, not even a month later, I was in um, down in Texas with a good friend of mine, Dr. Sinise, John, Sinise Dixon. 
And we were driving in her car, the, her rental car, going to look at places to sell books and what have you. And I looked on Facebook. And on one hand, I hate Facebook. On the other hand, it, it's, a good, it's a good medium. I looked on Facebook and one of my nephews in Boston had posted that his sister, Angelina, my goddaughter, who was 30 years old, had just passed away. She had a massive um, breathing attack, asthma attack. She was nine months pregnant. And when she passed, they took the baby. Four hours later, the baby was gone. That was two deaths. That's three within less than a month. Between March and July of 2018, at least two people that I was either close with or knew about, they were passing every month. This was a pandemic on the battlefield of my life, the pandemic of death and loss, which would lead to grief. On August the 7th, 2018, I got a call from my, my husband's phone. He was at work and I answered the phone and this young lady said, Beatrice, and first of all, look, you have to understand, I grew up in South Carolina. So for some woman to call me on my husband's phone, that's bold right there. Okay, let's just be honest about it. That's real bold. And I wanted to reach through the phone and grab her. But then she said to me, Beatrice, this is Claudia. John has collapsed and he's not coming back. He's not, we haven't been able to revive him. That took the breath out of me. Because on August the 7th, 2018, after January the 27th, all the way down, my husband passed away. And at that point, I really did not know what to do because after him, there would be even more deaths. There would be Nikki, my best friend's um, nephew in Boston. He passed away. Um, Dr. Dixon's auntie, Aunt Beverly, whom I had met and fallen in love with, she passed away. And there were so many more deaths that just kept coming and coming and coming. That's a pandemic. When we look at COVID-19, that was something, it started in, what, October of 2019, and it just flourished to the point where it started taking people out, and the United States looked at it, all the countries around the world, we looked at it and said, what is this that's going on? We found ourselves wearing face masks and, and trying to do business as usual, but there was no more business as usual because our new normal was COVID-19, and we had to stop and think, okay, what do we do now? And I'm, I'm pretty sure that many of you are right there right now because something has happened in your business. Something has happened in your world to change your business paradigm around. Something has shifted in your life, causing you to look at the pandemics of loss, of confusion, and maybe compound grief. Because see, when my husband passed and then the people after him, I was lost. I had lost myself. I lost who I was. I lost my purpose in the Lord. I lost my clarity and direction. I lost my focus. I didn't know who the drill sergeant of life was at that point. Because now I'm trying to deal with being Beatrice Bruno without a husband. I, I, I had to deal with being the mother of four adult children who had lost their daddy. I had to be the friend who had whose friends had lost their friend in my husband. There were so many different things in this pandemic of life that I had to deal with that I, I didn't even know what to do. And to be honest with you, I'm really surprised I'm standing here today. But let me say this. On the day of my husband's home going service, guess who had to get up and preach that service? Yep, you got it. That'd be me. Because God had put something inside of me that will cause me to stand up in action regardless of the pandemic that was going on in my life. God knew exactly everything that I was facing inside of me. He knew what I was feeling. He knew what I was going through. He knew I did not want to stand before those people and say, look, my husband is gone. And this is the message God has given me to you, to you today, given to me for you today so that you can make it to that next step. He knew I didn't want to do that. After my husband passed, there were people were calling me to speak at their organizations. And I would cry before every time I'd have to speak because I was lost. I was used to hearing that voice, get them, baby, go and knock them dead, baby. That's what he would say when I left the house to go and speak. I didn't have that anymore. When I traveled, I, I used to text and say, Touchdown Denver when I got back to Denver and then I'd say, 
oops, Denver didn't get any touchdowns, did they? Sorry. <laughs> but those were the things that we shared because that's who we were. And now I had to find out who this Beatrice was. Why am I sharing this with you today? Because many of you are in that same place. No, you didn't lose a spouse. You didn't lose a friend. You haven't lost a child, a godchild, or anything like that. But COVID-19 changed everything for you. Look at how we're doing business right now. I'm on a webinar, speaking to a, a room full of conference people, doing the things I've been created to do, but I'm not in a venue, and, and this is my soldier son's home, and I'm sure you see Smokey the Bear back there in the corner because he's an avid hunter and all that. Above my head is a moose, is a moose, you know, but this is our venue now. This is our new normal for when we go out and present around the country, around the world. This is what we have come to because COVID-19 changed everything. And I, I want to tell you about this woman in the Bible that her life changed as well. And I, I want to talk to you about the Shunammite woman in 2 Kings, the fourth chapter. The prophet Elisha, had, he go through Shunam every once in a while and he'd go and, and he would go and, and, and give the words that God had given to him for the people. And every time he went through, this Shunammite woman and her husband would see him coming through. And she finally told her husband, she said, look, that's the man of God again. We need to let him come into our house and, and just bless him. And so they made up a little room for Elisha on the top of the house. They put a bed up there, a chair, a, a table with a, a candle on it. They made it up nice for him so that every time the man of God came through town, he would be able to stop over there and just enjoy himself. And so through process of time, the man of God said to his little servant, he said, Gehazi, what can we do for that Shunammite woman? She has been very careful to take care of us. And Gehazi said, well, let, let me ask her. And he said, what do you need? And she said, oh, I'm, I'm good to go. I'm amongst my own people. I'm good. And Elisha said, well, let me go ahead and uh, you're going to have a baby. And she looked at the man of God because this is what we do. When God sends a message to us, sometimes we'll look at the person who's bearing the message and say, look, don't be lying to me. Okay, I don't even know why you, I, I don't want that. I don't want that business. I don't want to do those things. I don't want to grow a legacy. And let's face it, y'all, you have told God at some point, I don't want to be doing this business. At some point, I told the Lord, why do I have to be a motivational speaker? Wasn't being a drill sergeant enough? Why do I have to go and just bare my soul to all these people now as the drill sergeant of life? That even sounds crazy. And yet, he called me to this for such a time as this. But the Shunammite woman looked at the man of God and she said, look, don't lie to me. Don't, uh, it, I, I don't want a son. I don't need a son. Don't lie to me. And the man of God said, this time next season, you will have a son. And sure enough, she had a little boy. And the little boy grew up. The Bible doesn't say how old he was, but he was old enough to go with his father to the fields to do the harvesting and what have you. But one day he went with his father to the fields and he said, my head, father, my head. And the servant picked up the little boy and took him back to the house, took him to the Shunammite woman. And she put him on her lap and the little boy died. Can you imagine the thoughts that was going through that woman's mind when she looked at this child that she really didn't even want? She didn't want the man of God to even speak that into her life. She looked at that child, and I want you to think about looking at your business, looking at your books, okay, looking at your, your, how much you made, how much you didn't make, how many people were supposed to pay you and did, and how many that didn't. Because at some point, something inside of you has said, I don't even want to do this business anymore because I don't think I can make it. I don't think I'm equipped to do what God, you obviously think I can. I just don't see me doing it. As the drill sergeant of life, I have looked at myself so many different times and said, you know what, Lord? 
Maybe you have somebody else that can do this drill sergeant of life thing. I just don't see me doing it now. I, I don't feel equipped for it. But the fact of the matter is, I was already equipped when I went into the United States Army, when I stood with my hand raised up and said, I will defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. I was being equipped to become the drill sergeant of life because the lessons that I learned in the military are some of the same lessons that I teach the people right now on how to get over themselves, get out of their own way and get what they want out of life or how to get over yourself and let go of the past because I've had to live these things. But that Shunammite woman, I want you to think about her and think about your business because when she looked at that child that was laying across her lap and that boy was dead, you have looked at your books, you have looked at your business and you say, this thing is dead. I don't see it being revived. I don't see it coming back. But God, God is saying to your heart today, yes, it will, because I got you. God is saying to you today, look at it again from a different perspective. And that's what the Shunammite woman had to do. She went and put the boy on the bed of the prophet. She could have just called her husband and said, well, he's dead. Let's go ahead and bury him. You could call somebody right now, call your, your, your accountant or call your business partner and say, look, let's just wrap it up. It's dead. This business is gone. But instead, you're still seeking the face of the Lord because if you weren't seeking the face of the Lord, you wouldn't be here right now looking at this webinar and saying, well, maybe somebody can give me a tip on how to do something different so that my business will grow. Just recently, just over the last couple of weeks, I myself have been looking at the drill sergeant of life and I said, Lord, I want this thing to grow like never before because not, not for any other reason, but just for me and just to know that you can do this, God. And God has been doing some things. He's been moving and shifting some things in my life. And I'm looking at God like, hmm, okay. <laughs> I know that's you, Lord. Now show me how to do it. Because see, the Shunammite woman, once she put her son on that bed, she walked out the room, she closed the door behind her. Mm -hmm. She went back down the steps and she called to her husband. She said, send me one of the servants and send me, send me a horse and a buggy. I need to go see the prophet. And her husband said to her, is everything okay? Now she could have said, our son is dead. But she didn't say that. She said, it shall be well. Listen to what she said. It shall be well. She didn't have that evidence in front of her because faith is the evidence of stuff hoped for. I'm sorry, the, the sign of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. She didn't have that in front of her because her son physically was dead. But she looked at her husband and she said, it shall be well. And when the young man brought the horse and the cart and she got in and she said, look, I want you to drive forward. I don't want you to go and find the man of God. And I don't want you to stop or slow down unless I say so. And so she took off on a journey. And I want you to think about this right here. What was she thinking as she was in that cart going to find the man of God? What could she possibly have been thinking every step of the way because she just, just left her household where she said, it shall be well. And every mile that they went, something changed on the inside of her. Every mile, every step that you're taking in your business right now, something is changing on the inside of you. As I look more at the drill sergeant of life, as I look at the things that I need to do for such a season as this, to go forward in God and to do everything that he has called me to do, I have to look at myself differently. I have to see myself differently because this is a new dispensation in my life. I have to look at myself not as Beatrice Bruno, the wife, so much as Beatrice Bruno, the widow, and a single woman that's going forward to build what God has given her to build. Because you see, God gave me this business back in 2010, 2011. And when he said it, it was... <laughs> It created turmoil in me because I just couldn't see me doing that. I, I had been beaten up in life after getting out of the military because, unfortunately, many people saw me as that person that was in the Army and she still thinks she's in there. And so I had to try to 
turn my brain around to the place where I would be accepted. Well, once the Lord said to me, you are the drill sergeant of life, that changed. Because I knew then that I couldn't go back and be who they wanted me to be. I had to be who God has called me to be for such a time as this. And I know some, I know many of you understand exactly what I'm saying. Because see, the businesses that God has given to you, many of your friends and even your family members have looked at you and said, you're crazy. You're cra There's no way in the world that's going to work. There's just no way. You're never going to make any money. Who's going to support you? What do you? Who do you think you are creating a business like that? How many times have you ha heard that? And then you went and you kept going. You kept moving, saying, I've got to do this because this is who I am. Well, this is who I am. And that's who the Shunammite woman is. Because she was thinking about her son, his dead body, back at the house on the prophet's bed. And she's riding in the back of this cart. The young man is just beating a horse and just taking her to the place that they can find the prophet. And when she got close to the prophet, the prophet looked out over the field and he said, Gehazi, that looks like that. That's that Shunammite woman. What is she? Go see what she needs. And Gehazi started running towards the Shunammite woman. And she stopped the cart and the, the young man, she let her, he let her out of the cart. And Gehazi said, is everything okay? And she said, it is well. Now what changed between it shall be well to it is well? Her heart had to change. Your heart is gonna have to change concerning your business today. In order for you to experience the it is well season of your life, your heart is gonna change it. I wanna give you four things that's going to help you to see where God wants you to be for such a time as this. Like I said, Dr. Silvoso, he already talked about this first one. And that's okay. That's okay because we're like-minded people dealing with like-minded situations on this battlefield of a pandemic life. Everything has changed for each and every one of the business owners that's under the sound of my voice. But God, God still remains the same. He says that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so it's time for us to really push in to what God has for us so that we can get to the place that he wants for us to be for such a time as this. So the first thing that the Shunammite woman did was she had to seek the face of the Lord because from the time, from the moment she laid that son down on the prophet's bed until she went back down the stairs, so that she could call out to her husband, hey, send me a young man to take me to find the prophet. Something changed in her mind, but she was thinking, okay, Lord, you gave me this child. Now I'm seeking your face. I'm gonna seek out the prophet because I want my child back, God. You wouldn't have given him to me had it not been a, for a very specific reason. And it's, it's strange to me that you never hear anything else about this little boy in the Bible. But I can almost guarantee you that God had a reason for him being in the Shunammite's life. So she had to seek the face of the Lord. Where is that coming from? Second Chronicles 7 and 14. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and heal their land. The Shunammite woman had to humble herself under the mighty hand of God. When the man of God, when the prophet Elisha said to her, you're gonna have a baby this time next season. She could have said, no, I don't want that. But she humbled herself. Even though she said to him, don't lie to me. She still humbled herself because somewhere in her heart, she said, whatever the Lord wants to happen with me, that's what will happen. She humbled herself. She prayed. She and her husband had to pray because when they finally got together, she conceived. They seek his face. They had to seek the face of the Lord to see what exactly his, this dispensation was going to be bringing into their lives. Humble themselves, pray, seek God's face, turn from their wicked ways. She had to turn from her way of thinking. In business, guess what we need to do on a continual basis? We have to humble ourselves and pray and seek God's face and turn from our wicked ways. 
why do we have to do those four things in order for him to do these three things? Then will he hear us from heaven and forgive our sin and heal our land. Now, I'm going to tell you, I, I'll be perfectly honest with you. When it came to establishing this thing called the drill sergeant of life, it just wasn't, I, I, I couldn't see it. It just wasn't real to me. But now more than ever, this is real because I see how people are going through. I see the stages of grief in people around me. And I know that the drill sergeant of life can help them. Recently, I was in Cape Girardeau for the U5 conference, which is a conference for the five-fold ministry, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. And as I was getting ready, preparing my PowerPoint for that conference, this name came out and it stuck and it's the griefologist. And so now I'm going to be presenting myself as the drill sergeant of life 2.0, the griefologist baby, because that's part of who I am. When I start talking about grief to people who are grieving, they get deliverance, they get healing, they get set free because grief is not something that we talk about in our society. Let's, let's just go ahead and admit it. We just don't because we feel that's a taboo item, but it's not. And if you have loved much, and this is one thing that God has really shown me over the years since my husband passed, to whom much is given, much is required, to whom much love is given, much grief is required. Guess what? I have grieved for my husband. Lord Jesus, I have grieved for my husband because I missed that man. We were married 27 years, four months, and 10 days. But I'm also getting healed as I go through the process of this grief walk because God has taken me into different levels of it so that I can get what I need to help other people to make it through the grief. And so I don't mind humbling myself and praying and seeking God's face and turning from my wicked ways so that he will heal me from heaven and forgive my sin and heal my land. That's what you need to do. You must do with your business today. You've got to stand before God. You've got to humble yourself and say, Lord, look, please forgive me. I didn't want this business that you've given to me. This wasn't something that I was even expecting from you. But God, I will humble myself before you and pray. Please help me to understand what it is that you would have for me to do in this business so that it will honor you and it will prosper in everything that you set it to. And then watch God. Watch God as you humble yourself and pray and seek his face and turn from your wicked ways. Watch God turn your business around. Because let's just be honest. With COVID-19, there have been so many businesses that have just closed up. Uh, I'm here in Brush Prairie, Washington. Uh, I'm living at the home of my soldier son. I was his drill sergeant in 1988. And so I, I have access to Vancouver, Washington, and all these little birds right around Brush Prairie, right here in Washington State. And I went one day looking for a dry cleaner. And every dry cleaner that I came to until the last one, they were all closed down. They had closed down because of COVID-19. There have been little restaurants that have just closed down because of COVID-19. There have been big restaurants. There's one down in Texas that um, Dr. Dixon and I frequent quite <laughs> frequently when we're down there um, and they have closed that restaurant is, is part of the Papa Do's, Papa Do's chain. That restaurant has closed down. So COVID-19 has just changed the landscape of what we've been living all this time. But God says, he promises that if we will humble ourselves and pray and seek his face and turn from our wicked ways, then will he hear from heaven, forgive our sin, and heal our land. Your business needs to be healed today. Seek the face of the Lord. Your finances need to be healed today. Seek the face of the Lord. He's waiting for you to turn around just long enough to say, God, I don't know what to do. He's not leaving all this on you by yourself. He wants you to seek his face because he's there for you. So number one, seek the face of the Lord. Number two, trust him. Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6, say, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. But then it also says, and be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil, for it shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. 
Do you trust the Lord today? In order for me to be right where I am today, I had to put my faith and trust in God as never before. Because here I am, a single woman after almost 30 years of marriage. Two days after my husband passed, the Lord had me looking at RVs. He said, I want you to consider an RV ministry. God, I'm getting ready to turn 60 at that time. <laughs> I'm, I'm almost 60. I'm by myself. Why do I need an RV? He said, consider an RV ministry. Well, I went ahead and got the RV. My first assignment was down to Trinity, Texas at the Trinity Pines um, Conference Center, working with other RV volunteers. And that was my time to get my brain together because I really needed to see what God wanted to show me, who I was in him, getting back to myself so that I could find my purpose in the Lord again. I had to trust him with all my heart and lean not to Beatrice's own understanding. Sometimes we have to take our name out of the situation and say, God, what do you want? What are you showing me? How do you want me to do this thing? How do you want me to flow in this God? I don't understand. Help me to not look at my own understanding, but help me to understand what you are telling me to do. I ask God for five things every day. Wisdom, knowledge, understanding, revelation, and discernment. Because without those five things, I won't be able to function. One of my, my jobs and one of my businesses is, a, is as an editor. I edit people's books. I wouldn't be able to function as an editor if I don't ask God for wisdom, knowledge, understanding, revelation, and discernment on a continual basis. Because with those five elements in my life, when I'm trusting in him, I can hear his voice. And yes, sometimes I do hear an audible voice of God. I do. Okay, I don't know if that's just peculiar to me, but I don't think so considering what all the patriots in the Bible heard. And I don't think God has changed that much since he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'm just saying but that's just me. But I hear him talking to me, giving me direction on which way he wants me to go. And I follow him as closely as I can. I don't get in front of him. I don't really like walking beside him because I may miss something. I want to walk in his footsteps because I want to make sure I'm not missing anything. So seek the face of the Lord. Trust him with all your heart, mind, soul, spirit, and strength. Number three, and this one is really critical. In 1 Samuel, the 30th chapter, David is in a really, really bad place. The Amalekites have taken the wives, the women, and the children. They looted all the stuff that they had. David gets back to the camp, and the men are upset because their wives and children are gone. And they're ready to, to beat David. They're ready to just take him out because they want their families back. David didn't know what to do, but the word of God says in 1 Samuel 30, verse 6, David encouraged himself in the Lord. Now, I want to ask you a question. How many times do you do this to yourself? If you missed it, let me do it on the other side. How many times do you just encourage yourself and pat your own self on the back and say, you know what? I messed up, but I'm bouncing back. I messed up. I didn't do as well as I thought I was going to do, but I'm coming back. I'm not going anywhere. And God, I know you got me. Because see, when we start encouraging our own selves, we don't have to wait for somebody else to come along and say, oh, you're doing a good job. Because nine times out of 10, unless you got really, really good and really close friends, hmm, they're saying behind your back, I hope they fail. And see, I've heard that too many times, way more times than I want to, especially amongst my Christian brothers and sisters. Oh, I don't know what they're doing. I, I just don't see God blessing that. And so they might as well sit down somewhere and just, you know, just maybe do something else. But see, I'm here to tell you today, you've got to encourage yourself. You've got to look back at God and say, God, you brought me through all that mess back there. Father, you brought me through all those deaths in 2018, and I'm still standing for you, God. God, I'm believing in you, and God, I know I can do this because you've got your hand on me. You're doing things in my life, Lord, that otherwise would not get done, 
but God, I'm trusting you. That's how David encouraged himself. So that when he said to God, God, do I pursue? And God said, yes, go get them. And when David stood up and he went to get the women and the children back and all their possessions, you can bet your sweet biffy, baby, that he got everything that, they, that the Amalekites had taken. And he was ready to go on in the Lord. Are you ready to go on in the Lord? Are you ready to do what needs to be done so that you can be everything that God has said for you to be for such a time as this? Now is not the time to give up. We've got about two and a half months left in 2020, 2020. 2020, the year of vision. Perfect sight, perfect vision. Have you written down the vision and made it plain so that as you see it, you can run with it? Hello? Oh, oh I guess I can't get any answers on Zoom, huh? Because in order for you to see where you're going, you got to write it down, baby, so that you will know exactly where it is you need to go so that when you get there, you'll know it. But as you go down the road to get there, you can keep con consulting with God and saying, okay, God, what else do I need to do? Which way do I need to go on this? Do you want me to take this left or do you want me to go right? And then watch God. See how God will just bless you with that. So seek the face of the Lord. Trust him. Encourage yourself. Now this last one, whew, this is a hard one to do. And, and I found out that through my journey with grief, I had put some obstacles in my way that would cause me to stay right where I was. And the obstacle was this. I, I was talking with my pastor, Apostle Adrian Taylor Jr. He's down in Cape Girardeau, Missouri. I had called him because I was having a really bad day. And I had already posted on Facebook that it was a rough day and I, I just, it was just one of those days. And as I talked to him, as I, I, I just verbally vomited all over him over the phone, when I finished talking, he said, you know I love you. And I tell this to folks all the time, when your pastor stops the conversation to say, you know I love you, that's the point where, the, where you either hang up the phone and run, or you sit there and take it, put, put your big girl panties on, your big boy boxers on, and say, okay, I'm ready for whatever you got to throw at me. But when he said that to me, he said, you know I love you. I, I looked at my phone, then I looked up, I was like, oh, Lord, what is he getting ready to say? And I said, yes, sir, I know you love me. And he said, do you realize that you have never said that Brother John was dead? I had always said, he passed, he's gone on with the be with the Lord, he left me, he's up there in heaven. I said all those things, but I never acknowledged that my husband was dead. Now, unlike the Shunammite woman, I didn't immediately run to the prophet in so many words. I called people and let them know that my husband had passed. I did. But when it came to the grief process, that was a totally different thing. And I had to understand how I would get to the it is well portion of my life. The Shunammite woman, she knew to go to the prophet. I knew to go to God. It took me a while, but I, I finally made it. And that's not saying that I'm leaving my husband behind because my husband will always be with me in thought, in mind, in heart. But that's saying that Beatrice needs to move forward. And so this last one is move forward. And we're talking about Philippians, the third chapter, verses 13 and 14, where it says, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus for my life. Are you moving forward in the way God has said for you to move forward for such a time as this? Because, see, you can very well hold yourself back. You can hold on to those past things that you've been holding on to for all this time so that you won't make it forward. I could very well just hold on to the fact that I'm married to this wonderful man and I just want to be married to him for the rest of my life. That's not going to happen because God took his son to be with him. And so now Beatrice has to be everything that God has said for her to be.
Are you moving forward in your business? Are you allowing that forward movement to take place so that you can do everything that God has called and created you to be for such a time as this? Because if not, you need to let those things behind you go. And you need to reach forward to those things that are in front of you. What's in front of me is our, our new vistas, new vistas, new things that God is going to allow me to experience. New platforms for the Drill Sergeant of Life to get on. New books for me to write. I have a list right now of over 70 books, titles that I need to write. And I've got to get those things done. But see, I've got to move forward. So as I seek the face of the Lord, as I trust him with all my heart, as I encourage myself on a continual basis, and as I move forward, God is going to be able to do exceeding abundantly above all I could ask or think according to his power at work in me. And yes, I did set my timer so that I wouldn't go over time. Hallelujah, because y'all know how preachers are. I'm just saying, okay, and I'm a preacher. But I just want it to be in a place that God can use me. And now I've gotten to that place in which he can use me as never before. I want you to be able to do that in your business. I want you to be able to seek the face of the Lord like never before to trust in him with all your heart, encourage yourself. And if you need some encouraging words, find me, the drill sergeant of life, because I can, I can encourage you. I'll give you a kick in the butt and we may do push-ups. I'm just saying, because I do push-ups. But I want you to move forward and then move forward with the things that God has given to you. I pray that this has been a blessing to somebody today. I know it blessed me again, Mr. Craig Johnson. Thank you so much for allowing me to come and to share this. I have loved each and every one of the presenters thus far, uh, that Dr. Savoso, who he's something else. And I, I look forward to just being in fellowship with everybody that's, that's watching the presenters today, the panel today. Um, but thank y'all. But let me pray for y'all and then I, I'm gonna be done. So Father, I lift up your people to you today. God, this is a critical time in all of our lives, in our businesses, in our homes, in our communities, in our world, oh God. But Father, we know that you are the unchanging God. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so Father, we have decided to follow you. We have decided to do the things that you have said for us to do for such a time as this, because we have no other. Lord, we are the sheep of your pasture. You are our shepherd, God. And we have decided, we have determined to trust in you with all our hearts and lean not to our own understanding. So, Father, as we humble ourselves and pray and seek your face and turn from our wicked ways, please hear us from heaven and forgive our sin and heal our land. Help us to be the creatures that you created us to be so many, so many eons ago, Father. Lord, we give you praise, honor, and glory. Father, I, I lift up each and every person under the sound of my voice and that will listen to this, look at this by way of recording. Father, that you will bless them in ways that they never even imagined. Let favor be upon them in this season of their lives in ways they've never seen it before. Father, move for your people. Move, Lord God, on their behalf like never before. And Father, keep them safe in you. Keep them always on track doing the things that you have called them to do. And Father, keep them ever mindful of your presence in their lives. Lord, thank you for the opportunities that you're giving all of us. Thank you for using us for your glory in these last evil and wicked days. Lord, we give you praise, honor, and glory. And we love you with all our hearts, our minds, our souls, our spirits, and our strength. And we thank you for being the author and the finisher of our faith. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, amen, amen, and amen. God bless y'all. Thank y'all so much. I love you with the love of Jesus. Follow me on Facebook, The Drill Sergeant of Life, y'all. God bless y'all.